Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and we have no guest today. I think we've got a big problem. And one of the big problems is that we're not connected enough. We're not, um, there's not enough love <coughs> in our lives. There's not enough um, depend interdependency with other people. And this is a big problem, and it's not an egregious problem, but it's more of a uh, subtle uh, problem. Uh, this book I'm reading, John Ransom's Andersonville Diary, is a book about a Civil War soldier who got captured by the North and spent about a year and a half in Anderson uh, Prison and another prison uh, in the South. He talks about the terrible conditions in the prison camp. And he said this amazing thing. He said that if the people, if the soldiers were connected with each other, if they had friendships, if they had uh, a fellow, somebody was looking out for them and they were looking out for them, they would almost always survive and live. But if they came into the prison camp and they didn't make a connection with somebody, they would probably be dead in three or four days. They would be dead in three or four days. And it just it struck me on how amazing it is how, how people die from a lack of connections with other human beings. <clears throat> I think one of the problems we have is that this kind of is underground because we, um, we hide this. We hide this. If you are on social media, you'll probably not see anybody bare their souls and tell you about the problems. No, they tell you about the vacation they went on, they tell you about wonderful things that are happening in their family, uh, all the other things that are going on. I get every once in a while, Christmas time, I'll get a Christmas newsletter from several friends. And it always has on there all the things that they were successful. This person graduated, this person got a new job, this person, we went on a couple uh, uh, trips, they don't tell about the struggles they have with their children. They don't tell about the struggles they have in their marriage. They don't put that on the Christmas card list, right? We don't advertise those kind of things, but I know those things are going on. I know those things are going on in all, all our lives. Everybody here has got things going on. And I think that the things that are holding us back from connecting with each other, and Fable hit on one of these things, it's fear. Fear keeps us from reaching out. Fear almost kept her from coming to this meeting tonight. An insecurity about not being good enough or not having your stuff done. And another reason I think we don't connect is because we're selfish. We're selfish. We don't want to care about somebody else. They're not like us. Uh, I actually wrote a book a leadership book. This is really a love book. The idea behind this book really is that people, you can motivate people by caring for them. The whole, the whole half of the book is about how you care for other people on your team at work and it motivates them to work harder. But it motivates them to do other things too. Like uh, take care of their own families when they go home and do more good deeds and give more to the uh, the charities and stuff around. So, so you know, if you care about people, that, and it, it works. There's other people through history. Um, and I know that my Uncle Leonard, my Uncle Leonard uh, is about my dad's age, right? Uh, and he used to call us all the time, call us from Florida all the time, and just to connect with us, connect with us, connect with us, and trying to find, you know, just talk. He's trying to, he told us what else people, nobody else in our, my dad's family ever called me, but Leonard always did. He took, he took a time to call. What's going to happen? What's going to happen if we all connect more? You know, uh, there is tension in our culture. Have you noticed that? I'm reading another book on the Civil War, too. And I, 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 there, was, there was tension in the 1830s, in the 1840s, in the 1850s, between the North and the South. And so much so that when one president was elected, 11 states seceded from the Union. That's how high the tension was. Have you noticed there's some tension in our country today? You know, I think we can lower this tension 
have more peace by connecting with other people. And, and so I, I think that uh, uh, one thing we can do is, is speak encouraging words. We can speak encouraging words. We can call people. Is that the timer right? We can, we can speak encouraging words. We can call out commonality. Commonality. Now, this is a this is something we use in our coaching system, and it's called commonality. And what it is is you you talk about something you have in common with somebody else. All right, talk about what you have in common with them. So let's just say that I meet somebody that I'm on the opposite side of the aisle for me politically. If I would call <laughs> out what we have in common, that would build a bridge. But have you noticed what happens? Because all the people on the right, the radio talk show, they call out what they have in, not in common with those people. They call out the differences. And the people on the left call out the differences they have with the people on the right. And sometimes I see, see husbands and wives calling out the differences they have, not the things they have in common. And I see about fathers and sons call out the differences they have, and not the things in common. So, so calling out the things in common is, is a huge way to, to, to connect with people. And, and another thing is um, uh, to keep track, keep track of things. I, I read this statistic a, a, a couple years ago, and it, it was this. Do you know that we, we have hormones in our body, right? Um, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, those are our happiness hormones. And, and oxytocin is one when, um, um, you, when you hug somebody, it gives them a, a rush of oxytocin. If, if I were to drop my papers on the ground and Faye were to come over here and pick up my papers, she and I would both get a little bit of oxytocin. And everybody that saw her do that good thing would get a little oxytocin. Well, I read that if you kiss your wife, she gets a jolt of oxytocin. And I started kissing my wife more often. You know, I've been, Karen and I have been married for 40 years. You know, we don't kiss as much as we did the first year we were married. But I made it a point to kiss more often, to connect more. So I think kisses and hugs are a big deal. Now let me tell you one last story. There was a man, 21 years old, January 2017. 21 years old, he had a heart attack. And he needed a new heart. And about that same time, a girl named Abby Connor died by drowning in a pool in Cancun, Mexico. And she had checked on her driver's license that she wanted to be an organ donor. So they took her, they flew her body to Fort Lauderdale and they cared for her and they kept her alive until they could harvest her heart and several other of her organs. And she actually saved six people's lives. And one of the lives that they, they, she um, saved was Lamoth Jack. 21 in Louisiana who needed a heart. So Lamoth Jack in January 2017 got Abby Connor's heart when she died in the pool. Bill Connor was Abby's dad and he was really heartbroken about his daughter. So much so in the fall, summer of, of 2017, he decided to take a bike ride down to Fort Lauderdale to thank the health professionals at the Fort Lauderdale Hospital that took care of her and was able to harvest her organs. And he had to go through Louisiana on his bike to get there. He had to go through Lamoth Jack's hometown. Lamoth Jack found out Bill Connor was gonna ride the bike through and he caught up with Bill. And he said, he, what he brought with him? He brought a stethoscope. He brought a stethoscope so Bill could listen to his daughter's heart beating inside of him. You know, I'm not sure that we're ever gonna be able to connect with somebody on that level. But if you call out what's in common with people, if you do more hugging and kissing, if you uh, record good activities and, and make, a, make, a, make an intent to be brave and be unselfish with other people, you're gonna live a rich life. Madam Toastmaster.